Hello and welcome to this video which is about Acoustica Audio's Fire the Clip plugin which is at the time of recording free if you own Cubase 12 whether it's Pro, Artist or Elements. Now as I understand it a few people have been having problems with installing and activating this plugin and I can see why because it's not the most friendly activation or installation process. I'll take you through that in this video and then also we take an overview of the plugin as well although it's not a really in-depth review of it which probably is warranted because I think it's got more to offer but this was recorded earlier in the month when this came out. I just haven't had time to get this video out but because people are having problems installing it I thought I'd finish it off. Apologies for any sharp or rusty edges on this video but I hope you found the installation and activation useful because it's definitely a bit tricky. So here we are on the linked uh, Fire the Clip page and you can see Acoustic of Steinberg, it, it actually does help you. Now the instructions here, uh, they are here. The, the issue with this, or you know, the main thing with this, is that you need to download their, their downloader, the manager application as they call it. It's, it's slightly clunky, it does work. Um, you may have some issues if you've got sort of any filtering on your internet, etc. Yeah, it's it's slightly slightly clunky. But anyway, once you've downloaded Aquarius Desktop, you then install Fire the Clip in it. So we're just going to look at it. I've already inst I've already downloaded this, but we'll just have a quick look at it because I appreciate that sometimes it can be helpful. So here we are in Aquarius Desktop. It's kind of an advert for their stuff, but the important thing is you need to click on the cog, and then you go to settings. And then you go to activations, and then you put your activation code in there, click apply. Once you're done with that, you won't think anything will have happened because it takes you back to the home page, which, which is the advert. But actually, if you go to purchased, then you can look through, you can see the things that you've got, and then you may only have one or two in there. But there you've got to fire the clip. Now, personally, I would just install VST3 X64 because I just find generally VST3 plugins are slightly easier to manage and I'm less particular about where I put them. So particularly on this Mac, I just want to put VST3 in and be done. So all you do is pick your uh, poison of choice, click install, and then hopefully it'll get installed. But as you can see, it's a fairly long process. It's quite a large thing for a simple uh, compressor stroke clipping plugin, but there we go. It's free, isn't it? So there we go, at the end of that, we don't actually see anything <laughs> particular in terms of changes, but that appears to be installed. So next thing is to have a look at the plugin in Cubase. So here we are in Cubase. As you can see, I've got a couple of audio tracks set up. These are just samples from Media Bay, so I'm sure you'll be able to find them if you want to get a hold of that kind of thing. But I always find those useful just for auditioning things, uh, particularly with new plugins, because I don't necessarily want to make a, a whole new uh, project up but I just then oh, what will this sound like on piano or drums or whatever so that's exactly what I've done here so with a quick look around the controls of the the plugin so I've got this set up as an insert which is typically how you'd use it although not always um, there's a few nice things to know it's firstly nice big control which is which is really good um, we've also got oversampling which anyone who's watched any of Dan Worrell's videos uh, to do with distortion will know that that's pretty important and we can see we've got lots of options here we're not going to look at that today, um, but it's nice to know that that's there because there are artifacts that you can get which you can help combat against that with oversampling. Uh, effectively, just a quick rundown of the controls. So I'm just going to play this sample with it bypassed. So we've just got this uh, vaguely Boomtown Rats-esque uh, piano intro, this bit of wibbling on a piano in D-sharp pentatonic, the the saddest of all pentatonics. Uh, and then popping this on here, so we can see we're not really doing much at the moment. Now, it, we can line this up and start to get some gain reduction, but to be honest, until we get to the end of this, we're not gonna see that much because it's fairly low in level. So we're just driving this a little bit harder. And we can see we're getting a bit of gain reduction. We've got four different modes here. 
So uh, Acoustica claim that this one is a custom clipping algorithm and it will go maybe 1 dB over full scale. So you might need to be a bit careful with this, uh, depending on where you're using this plugin. This one's more of an analog kind of sound to it. And this one is supposed to be low on processing, which may come into play, particularly if you start playing around with the uh, oversampling modes, which are available. Yeah. With this, we probably don't have enough gain. So fortunately, they've seen fit to give you the ability to absolutely mash it by putting up to 20 dB of gain on there. So this just rescales. As you've seen, the, the knob stays in the same position. So suddenly you get your ears bent off. But yeah, you can then... So if you're trying to make this sound a bit more filthy at these low levels, you've got access to that in here, which is quite nice. So the ceiling control here is defaults to off, which is just in the, the normal manner. But then you've got O, which is the standard ceiling, a few dBs higher than the computer clip level. So it should be used at the end of a chain. So if this is your final thing, this is the mode you'd want to be in. Oh, well, is a custom ceiling, but with less aliasing. And then this one is if you are putting this before a true peak limiter. So I think in most cases, you'll probably just have that in either off or O mode. Uh, we've got some output dimming. So that can be useful because, say, if you start whacking this up, you can get a fair old bit of level out of it. So it's nice to have this just built in as a quick uh, button that you can press there. But you can see we're certainly getting plenty of uh, distortion there and then we've got auto gain as well uh, I'm always a bit wary of auto gain because you never quite know exactly what is going on in terms of what it's doing so generally I, I leave those kind of things alone and finally we've got a nice progressive change between soft and hard knee compression so let's just have a quick listen to it on some drums as well because I found this is quite good for allowing uh, absolute mullering of a drum clip so we can really and if we put that ceiling to zero and let's just take a bit of the output out but I think it sounds pretty good in terms of getting that you know a warmer sound it's quite nice to say it's a nice one knob solution although they say one knob but then we've got a whole load of other buttons and a slider so is it really a one knob it's not quite one knob to the degree that Waves plugins are, but it's it's certainly certainly a, a workable thing. And if you just want a bit of warmth and distortion, it's probably going to be quite a nice go-to thing for a while. Uh, I've not had chance to to audition it really uh, properly at this point because I wanted to get this out quickly so people can get their hands on this and get started. But yeah, it's nice to have. Uh, another plug-in in your distortion arsenal, I'd say particularly because it offers oversampling. Now let's just take a quick look at what that does. So we're on my hideously old uh, 2015 MacBook Pro at the moment, and let's just whack in some oversampling. So let's go to 16 times, and we can see that it's put some extra load on there. Let's go 1024 just for a laugh. And yeah, that's that's killed my Mac. It's not happy about that at all. So it may be possible to go to 256 in eco mode. But no, even in there, you know, so we can see that oversampling obviously massively increases the amount of processing power that's needed for a plug-in. And my aging uh, Intel-based 2015 MacBook is not a happy camper at this point. So... This is one of the one of those times where you think, you know what, maybe I need a new computer, and maybe I do need a new computer. But you'll be able to experiment with that, etc., and see how much uh, you can get out of your particular system. But we can see it's a reasonably uh, juicy plugin in terms of uh, the amount of processing power that it needs uh, at this point. Although, obviously, you say I know I'm using an aging system for this. It's nice to have those options available. So, particularly if you've got a powerful machine that can do this or you can always do this and then render it offline so you can you can get around it that way so that's a quick look at the fire the clip uh clipper stroke compressor it's listed as a compressor in their download manager but i think you'd you'd probably be using it for the warmth and distortion that it imparts once we get anywhere near uh max level
So you can get on and get that downloaded uh, by October the 3rd because after then this will no longer be available. But so check out the main video on this offer and how you get these. And as ever, hope you found that useful and we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.